Hi right, guys, welcome back to the Astro Imaging Channel. Uh, tonight's session is the 2017 NEEF recap. Um, well, before I go into that, what I do want to show off is our image of the week. And uh, as I'm pulling that up, I will say uh, this session may not be that long and that extensive because Alex and I recorded a bunch of videos that we didn't have time to get many of them um, many of them sent back and forth. We're going to work on that for a couple weeks, uh, for a session a couple weeks from now. Uh, but this week's image of the week, um, let me make sure you are looking at the same thing. I am, yes, this week's image of the week uh, goes to Dave Watkins for his M82. Uh, we had M81 a couple weeks ago. We have M82 now. Uh, really good season for these targets, and he did a great job with this, uh, really bringing out the H-alpha region, but also still showing off a lot of the galaxy. Um, and it's posted on our website. If you guys want to see, I never really explicitly said this, but uh, if you guys want to check out the previous images of the weeks, just click on our website, click the IOTW button, and you'll be able to scan down and see them all. Uh, the same spot, the IOTW button drops down and lets you submit your images for the image of the week. So uh, you submit them, you'll be in consideration, and... Um, I'll be honest, we could use a few more posts up there. I know someone's got some clear skies out there. Um, but speaking of that, uh, there's nothing like, uh, sorry, bear with me as I take my camera back. Uh, there we go. <laughs> there's, there's nothing like Neef. Uh, you get to go to Neef and complain about how bad the weather was for the last uh, four or five months, uh, and then consider spending lots of money on equipment so they can continue complaining about how bad the weather is. This time just with a lot less money in your pocket and some nice shiny gear in front of you. Uh, but um, for those of you that don't know what Neef is, uh, let me, I'm, I have to flip between a whole bunch of screens, so I'm gonna be all over the place. Um, so for those of you that don't know uh, what Neef is, confirming you're seeing what it is, uh, Neef is a Northeast Astronomy Forum. Um, it is uh, basically the biggest, it, it may be the biggest astronomy show on the East Coast. It may be the biggest in the country. I'm not quite sure. But it's a two-day event that uh, has uh, basically all of the manufacturers and a, a good number of vendors are there to, uh, well, the manufacturers are there to show off their new equipment and the vendors there are, are there to sell it to you. Uh, the vendors tend to have actual discounts, which you don't see frequently in our hobby. Um, I will uh, say this. Uh, they almost all offer 10% off, and they bring a whole heck of a lot of equipment there. Some vendors offer promotions on new gear. Um, basically, that $25 for the one-day ticket, you, if you're looking to buy something, you're going to save a lot just by spending that $25 to show up. It is in Suffern, New York, which is pretty close to New York City. Um, and uh, along with the vendors and manufacturers, they have some great speakers. Uh, some speakers are the pros, um, whether it's someone from uh, NASA, uh, Scott Bolton, principal investigator to the Juno mission to Jupiter. So this guy uh, knows what he's talking about. Uh, the search for exoplanets by Sarah Seeger. There, you know, there, there are a lot of great speakers. Um, and then for us uh, imaging guys, uh, there are a few good imaging workshops that are at this uh, that are at this event. But um, Two days before NEEF is Northeast Astro Imaging Conference, which is an imaging-centric conference where many of the same vendors show up, but the speakers tend to be a bit more advanced, and they tend to uh, have what I'll call more structured workshops. I was not at the uh, Astro Imaging Conference, but Alex McConaughey was. He got us some videos, and we also got some videos of NEEF. Um, but for now, uh, basically, I'll show you uh, a little bit of what I think is kind of the hot stuff. Um, after I take my camera back, and I'm going to have to check out what I am hearing over there. Not over my shoulder, but over there. Um, sharing my screen again. I'm going to have to do this one full screen. And sorry about that. That always drives me nuts. Uh, uh, looking for this window here. 
and I believe you're uh, you are seeing that full screen. Um, so this is the uh, balcony overlooking Neath. Um, we have a, kind of a cool video of this too that Alex took, but I'll show this off first. Uh, basically, you can see how large it is. There are a lot of vendors there. Uh, right up front, you can see telescopes.net. Um, behind them, I believe, was OPT. Uh, so along with the retailers, uh, you're going to see all the vendors, like I said. Uh, Celestron's represented there. I mean, basically, all the big hitters are there every year. Um, and most of the CCD and CMOS vendors are going to be there. Uh, the small equipment manufacturers like the um, uh, Moonlight, um, uh, who am I, Feather Touch, uh, and, and they've all got stuff for sale. Uh, so this is part of the balcony overlook. And then if we shoot over here, you're going to see the other uh, part of the balcony overlook. Um, they say two football fields. Alex had brought this up. We're not quite sure it's two football fields, but I'd say, yeah, uh, it's pretty big. You'll be satisfied. The um, traffic this year was, uh, in my opinion, uh, pretty strong. I took this as soon as I got there, a little bit after 10, and uh, it got more and more crowded all day long. And uh, you know what? I like seeing crowds there. I like feeling like people are interested in astronomy and the cool uh, new gear that's coming out. Uh, and in some cases, they may just be beginners that are uh, that want to see the space show. It's funny. I saw it uh, framed both ways, uh, astronomy forum and space show. So they probably just try and draw the locals in and then uh, show them the, the really cool stuff. Um, but... Uh, Starting off, um, I'm just going to show some of the things that I thought were the basically the coolest things that, or the most pertinent to what we're going to be looking for, uh, maybe pertinent to what we've spoken about somewhat recently. Uh, Optech has a new focuser that they're working on, should be released shortly. Um, if you know the Gemini focuser, uh, focuser rotator, I believe, uh, that is sitting to the left there. So right next to it is their new focuser, which you can see a lot smaller, a smaller footprint, um, odd, oddly shaped so that if you're using a Celestron edge, it does not interfere with the lock knobs. Uh, so it's not only for the edge, but he decided to produce it that way so that it would be compatible with the edge without any interference. A really cool unit. I don't remember what he said the travel is on this, but uh, basically it's sufficient for any application you're going to use. The capacity was well more than anybody's going to put on it. I, I think he said they had it tested at 30 some pounds. Uh, so uh, really a cool device. Um, focuser for kind of rock solid imaging. We, those of us who have upgraded to CCDs, we've basically all upgraded our focusers. Um, and sometimes uh, you upgrade your focuser and then you upgrade your camera and you need to upgrade your focuser again. If you buy this, you're not going to have to upgrade your focuser. And uh, Jeff from Optech, uh, I think, may be interested in coming on and presenting for us. He's got a lot of really cool equipment. Um, so uh, if he does, uh, it'll be uh, a really educational and, uh, uh, I don't know, it's one of those that will probably cost you some money. Another item he was showing off was the Mead um, focuser. I believe this is an electronic focuser for Mead. Um, the Mead system, the mirrors on bearing, so inherently it might be a little bit more uh, imaging centric. Uh, that said, I think a lot more of us have used the Celestron. Uh, so it is what it is. Very very cool product. Uh, he does off. He has offered for a long time. Um, a secondary focuser for the edge. So he's had an edge solution for years now, and now he has a, a mead solution as well. There's a close-up of it. And, okay, so this is interesting. I don't know how many of you are using Lozmandy mounts out there, but uh, this cool thing here, this... Uh, dovetail, I'll call it, because that's what it is, uh, sits between the RA and declination axis. You, you, For the most part, everyone knows you can remove your RA and declination axis uh, to split it, split it in 
pieces if you're going portable and you don't want to carry that much weight. But uh, the other thing you can do now is you can remove your deck axis from a smaller Lasmini mount. So if you have a G8, you can take your deck axis and put it on your G11. Or you can put it on uh, the uh, larger mount, which the, the name or the, the designate is it the Titan? Maybe, maybe it's a Titan. Uh, you can take the smaller axis and put it on the Titan. So it's basically fully interchangeable. If you are uh, going portable, you want to bring your good mount, but you don't want to carry that much weight and you know you don't really need the capacity, you can take a small deck head and put it onto your big mount and save yourself probably 15, 20 pounds in transport. So a good option if you're using a wide field scope and, uh, well, you have a big mount. At the same time, if you buy the big mount, you only need to buy the smaller deck head and you can interchange it and you'll get the RA performance you're looking for and save some weight. Uh, as with all Lasmandy products, or at least, uh, I hope this applies to this, but I, basically uh, if you have an old mount and you want to upgrade it, you can do it. Uh, you can call Lasmandy, they will uh, basically tell you what you need, whether it's motors or the uh, Gemini 2 system, basically whatever it is you could want. Celestron. Uh, Celestron has a couple new mounts out. Um, they they were not introduced last year, so this is uh, one of the few new products that I saw at Neef. Uh, I think last year was a sweet spot for the manufacturers. They were all introducing new stuff. Um, I I don't think there were that as many new products this year as there were last, but uh, there was still stuff. That was exciting. There was stuff that was new last year that's still new, new this year and that hasn't quite made it to the market yet. Uh, but we'll talk about that in a, in a little bit. Um, so this is the... Uh, I, is this... I, 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 it's not the CGE. Is it the CGE XL? You know, I'm not sure the designation of this particular amount. Uh, but uh, this one here is the CGX. And in the background... CGXL, I believe they're calling that larger mount. Um, so two new mounts from Celestron. I did not get a chance to really ask them about the details of it, uh, what kind of uh, tracking performance they're getting out of it. But the truth is, um, I probably shouldn't ask Celestron reps what they think about the mount because it looks to me pretty nice, and I'm sure that's what they're going to say. But I'm interested in getting some user reviews of this. So if people have uh, tried these out and... Uh, the performance is as good as it seems because they really did build them up and make them more imaging centric then i'd love to hear from you uh of course they're brand new so uh i don't think there are many users of them out there yet but hey if you got one let me know the solar star party so i have to say every year uh this is one of the things that i look forward to the most um now, of course, this year, just walking into Neef was difficult because the whole place is under construction. I guess that means it's going to be a lot nicer next year. But usually the Solar Star Party uh, is about, uh, well, is about twice as big. Um, but they had a big fence there and some bulldozers over there. I don't think a lot of people wanted to jump the fence to look at a solar telescope. So we kind of confined ourselves to this side of the space. And there you can see Stephen Ramson dressed up like a star. Uh, or like a star, like the sun. Uh, and Stephen uh, runs the Charlie Bates Astronomical Society. He probably does more outreach than all of the other outreach people combined. He literally is out there almost every day. Uh, and uh, about the most uh, interesting and uh, fun guy, whether you are... Uh, really scientifically oriented or whether you're a child because he's really good with kids and he knows how to speak to them and how to get them really excited about it. He is uh, one of the best advocates for solar astronomy or astronomy in general that I've ever met. Um, but we don't just go there to see Stephen. We go there because <clears throat> there is some awesome gear there. Uh, you can see here an 8-inch telescope with a... Um, Daystar, I don't remember. I, I, I think they just call it the Daystar filter, but 
this is one of those uh, big bucks solar filters that uh, is tunable to a number of different wavelengths. Um, this is, uh, and goes on basically any telescope that you have. So this guy's got an eight inch. Not only did we get to look through an eight inch telescope, we got to look through an eight inch telescope at the sun using an awesome filter. And uh, that was uh, one of the highlights. Um, let me see, I don't, do I have one more? Yes, okay, so this is Stephen Ramsden's, uh, is this Stephen's gear? I believe this is Steven's gear. Um, I'm not, I'm actually not 100% sure on that. I think that's a 152. I know he's got a 152, but his might, his might be this, this stuff behind here. Um, but, um, you know, solar telescopes are expensive. Some clubs have solar telescopes. Uh, not many clubs have 152s or 100 inches or a spectrograph with, three solar telescopes riding on it, so you could look through any which one you want. Probably uh, two of these three are double stacked. Uh, basically, you've got a lot of expert gear on there, and uh, this may be your only opportunity. I know it's my only opportunity to look through such nice solar telescopes to compare them. And if you're in the market for a solar telescope and you're thinking of spending that much money, um, coming to Neef and looking at the Solar Star Party, uh, just there's no substitute. Uh, you know, they tell you if you're looking for astronomy gear, go to a uh, club near you. Like I said, your club might have a solar telescope, but you're not going to see this lineup here. And the uh, Lunt guys were actually off the field in a different location. Uh, I spent a long time looking for them, and then they were hidden off on the side. Uh, but they were there, and they have uh, some great gear as well. Um, and look at, look at the sky right there. Now, you see a few clouds. Knock on wood, I have never been to a cloudy solar star party at Neef. Um, Within about an hour of me taking this photo, the clouds completely disappeared, and it was clear yesterday and today. And uh, basically, I will guarantee it's going to be clear next year because I don't know; it just always works out. Uh, and this is this is uh, just uh, I don't know every every five or ten minutes. All of us Northeasterners would get together and start kicking the dirt and complaining about how cloudy it's been. And sure enough, we got two clear nights in a two clear days and nights in a row. So uh, really awesome. Um, okay, so attic. Um, this uh, is their uh, sixteen two hundred camera, kind of in the center there. I actually have a better image of it right there. Uh, and this uh, is a big new chip. Um, it was new last year, but I don't believe any of the vendors actually truly had it on the market. Uh, this year, a couple of the vendors have it on the market, but a couple of them are still developing it. And um, I will um, tell you, I believe the attic is on the market. The Starlight Express is not, not on the market yet. The Finger Lakes is on the market. Uh, and uh, QHY, I believe, is on the market. And it's funny. Uh, a few people say, it's, it's funny when people, someone says to you, well, I'm not supposed to say this yet, but. And let's just say that I heard a lot of, I'm not supposed to say this, but both in regard to the 16200 and some new CMOS cameras that are going to be coming out. Uh, since they basically all told me, I'm not supposed to say this, but I'm not going to repeat it on the channel. I don't know if they knew who they were talking to, but uh, actually they did. So uh, I don't know. I don't know quite whether they uh, wanted me to share it or not, but uh, you'll get some hints uh, in a couple of weeks when you see some of our videos. Um, all right. The uh, Prima Luce Lab. Now, we've discussed these a lot. Uh, not, per not this particular uh, brand and computer, uh, but Tolga was on with kind of a do-it-yourself solution that uh, basically I think he uh, sold maybe four or five that I know of, and I spoke to a bunch of guys at Neef who uh, were either in the market for them right now, but uh, Tolga just bought a a uh, small form factor PC mounted on top of his mount. And a few of the guys in the room here did that. Now it's the hot thing to do. Uh, in fact, Tolga, I believe, presented at NIAC, and that was one of the hot, one of his hot topics, was just discussing his mount top computer. But um, this is an off the, 
off-the-shelf turnkey solution for that mount top computer. This, uh, they do sell dovetails, and you'll notice the screws on top. Uh, so basically, you just screw it right into a dovetail, mount it on top of your, of your uh, mount, and you're ready to go with Windows 10. Now, this particular one is a single core. They offer this. They offer, I believe, a dual core i3 and then an i5, and I'm not sure about the i5, but basically it just goes up in processor speed. And um, from what I remember, they do not suggest this one if you're doing plate solving. Uh, you can do it. But uh, this is basically a single core, so it might take you a couple minutes to plate solve. The other two steps up will plate solve really quickly. Um, you're getting much better process amount out of them. Built-in Wi-Fi, um, built-in USB. You've got three USB ports there, which, if you ask me, three is about what you need. Um, you can output to a monitor. You have Ethernet if you want to run wired Internet, if you don't trust your uh, Wi-Fi. And in the back there, You've got power. So you can power your camera, you can power your filter wheel, you can basically power whatever you want. And when you turn this off, uh, when you cut the power to this device, it cuts the power to the your equipment. So you've basically got a remote power on. Um, kind of. The next two devices up that are slightly more expensive than this and then considerably more expensive than this, um, are uh, uh, are maybe only the high the the top price one. Uh, you can actually use uh, power on and power off your devices individually, so it gives you a console to do that with. Um, why would you? And this the the, the gentleman um, uh, Filippo. Uh, suggested, uh, even brought this up himself. He says, you know, I know a lot of people say, oh, I could do this myself a lot cheaper. First of all, it's not going to be in such a pretty package. But that power, uh, by the time you buy that little mount side computer and add that power solution that is switchable, that you can access via Wi-Fi, well, you're talking 400 for a power solution like that. Then another four to 800 for your uh, mount, uh, mount top computer. You're already approaching the 8, uh, 8, 1400, 1700 that these devices run. Now, could you do it cheaper? Yeah. Could you do it in such a nice, tight package that easily dovetails on? Uh, I don't know. Um, they, they, this, this is pretty cool. Um, as well, and it's over in the top right there. Uh, you can just barely see it, but for $400, they offer a much smaller device that you can put a DSLR on. You can mount a guide camera to the side, and it will both, via an app, guide for you and trigger your exposures. So let me, let me just kind of explain that all over again. This device here triggers your exposures and runs your guide in, and you access it via an app. So that is basically all the computer you need. It's basically a, a, a small computer that's only doing a few tasks. It's not controlling your mount. It's not, um, it's not doing plate solving or anything. But I would almost guarantee that most of us start, uh, when most of us started out, this would have been perfectly sufficient for what we were doing and probably a lot more efficient than even bringing out a uh, DSLR or... Uh, uh, excuse me, a laptop or uh, anything like that. Really cool solution here. Um, so uh, Starlight Express, not yet released, but this in the center is their new large format body for a few different sensors. For the 16200, and for the 16803, I believe, um, cools minus 45 and is, uh, well, they don't have a price on it. It is not on the market yet, but they are introducing it. It works with their filter wheels, all of their filter wheels. And if you're familiar with Starlight Express, their filter wheels are actually very well priced for what they do. Um, you can, by using a Starlight Express filter wheel, you can... Uh, 
save some money over some of the other filter wheels or even some of the integrated filter wheel packages. But uh, now with this body, uh, you can basically have a large format chip. Um, and then over on the left there, that is with their typical round body, uh, the 11,000, is it two, uh, whatever the uh, Kai sensor, KAI -I sensor is. Um, so uh, some really nice solutions there as well. In front, uh, uh, active optics from them. Um, got some nice stuff. And of course, they're famous for the Lodestar. Uh, they also have the Lodestar 2, the uh, uh, Lodestar... Uh, what is the other guide camera? I forget the other guide camera. Larger the field. Star. The Ultra Star. Yes, yes, yes. Larger sensor, smaller pixels. Uh, let me think about that. Is that correct? Yes. Larger sensor, smaller pixels. Uh, so, well, you don't really need a large sensor for uh, uh, guide camera, and you don't really need smaller pixels. But I did uh, happen to have a chat with uh, Gaston, and I don't have a slide. Uh, for this, uh, this is another one that I thought I photographed, but uh, for some reason couldn't find it on my camera. Um, I did have a chat with Gaston, and if you remember a few weeks back, we were speaking about, uh, and, and I'm sorry, this is uh, Gaston Bodat from, or Bodat from uh, Innovations Foresight, the maker of the on-axis guider, uh, among other things, the uh, um, uh, infrared, what, what am I looking for? The infrared pickoff prism that uh, allows you to focus live while you're exposing. I don't remember the product name, but it's a really cool product that he spoke about a bit uh, last time, and I'm sure he'll speak about, well, this is what I'm getting at. Uh, Gaston will be on in a couple weeks uh, or, or maybe three or four weeks to discuss his new product, something we spoke about a couple weeks ago, uh, <clears throat> multi-star guiding. Focus lock is the software you're talking about, I believe, and the dichromatic beam splitter. Dichro, yeah, dichromatic beam splitter, exactly, uh, which allows you to focus while you're exposing using the focus lock software. Um, but what he's also been working on is uh, multi-star guiding. And when we, when I, when we had the uh, presentation a few weeks back, uh, there were a few qualifiers. First of all, some of this may be theory. Because this, uh, the, the one we had spoke about a couple weeks ago was only for a Mac. And there aren't a lot of us uh, astrophotographers using Macs. Some people may be, but not a lot of us are. Why? Uh, just because um, a lot of us have been using Windows because a lot of the programs were kind of Windows-centric um, for, well, Macs have only been popular for the last, what, seven, eight, nine years. And before that, uh, all the geeks used Windows, and all the geeks were the ones doing the astro imaging. So uh, that software was only for Macs. And some people are disappointed about that. We were hoping to kind of push it to uh, some other platforms. But Gaston is now uh, about to be releasing a software that lets you do that multi-star guiding. And when I heard the presentation a couple weeks ago, I kept, on go I kept on going back to Gaston's presentation, thinking that isoplanetic patch, the, it's such a small, uh, the ripples that you're getting uh, are such a small region that it's going to interfere with your guide corrections, or, or I should say it's going to make your guide camera think that the guide star uh, look to the, look like the guide star as well. We we've seen we've all seen it. It's jiggling, right? It's not always in the right spot. So by taking a full field and using all the stars to get your uh, guide corrections, you're actually reducing that. And he had a demonstration there, and he was showing me um, how much that actually impacts the guide pulses that are sent and how much of a significance it is. And it is very significant. Uh, I was asked earlier, do I think it's significant enough that it'll tighten up the stars? And just by looking at the uh, demonstration or the just the little chart that he had, the, the, the spread uh, of the multi-star guiding versus single star guiding, I cannot imagine it not. Um, it was very significant. The numbers were, were pretty considerable. Um, I 
I'm only going to speak about that much. But oh, the other thing I'll say is uh, it does a much better job as the star's signal to noise ratio reduces. So uh, may not be a problem with an on uh, with the ONAG, but with an off-axis guider, sometimes that becomes an issue. Uh, his software is really smart. It's really able to overcome it. Uh, he was able to continue guiding even after we dimmed the test stars to the point where we couldn't see them. So, um, and you can also continue guiding when your test stars go well out of focus. So if you're switching between filters and you are using, uh, um, you switch between filters, you use your filter offset, your guide stars go out of focus, uh, his software will continue guiding as if you were still in focus. So a really smart software. I gave you, what, five, three, three to five minutes on it because I'm so excited about it. He's going to spend a lot more time about it, and it's going to be uh, a great presentation, I'm sure. Yeah, so now, I listen, I, I go to NEEF every year, and I want to have a lot of fun. Um, I'll be honest with you, Alex and I were both running around doing a lot of videos, so we spent a bit more time, I'm not going to say working, but we spent a bit more time trying to prepare content, and I didn't really get to enjoy myself as much as I would have liked, because I would have loved to jump on that um, that uh, bouncy house right there. But of course, I told my kids, uh, last couple of years, I don't believe they had the kids section. This year they did. I told my kids, uh, they don't have a kids section this year, you guys should stay home. I almost uh, wish I brought them. If uh, you know, if you're going to have fun, bring your kids because uh, they have this kids section. They have a bunch of different projects for your kids. Uh, I believe you're building solar system models, and um, uh, there's actually some uh, robotics stuff that uh, I know my son would would have loved to see, but um, I, I didn't. Uh, I, I didn't. Uh, I don't know. I didn't bring them this year. I did bring them home some cool stuff. The only things that I purchased at Neath uh, was uh, I bought some uh, make your own slime. I bought some uh, jelly crystals. I bought some astronaut ice cream. Um, got home from Neath and I brought the slime over to a friend's house so all of our kids could play with the slime together. Big mistake. They had slime all over their house. I felt terrible. Uh, but uh, I. I spent about an hour and a half cleaning it up so they didn't have to worry about it of course uh, moonlight instruments was there and this is what their really cool new product is uh the night crawler and i believe uh i believe someone in the room has one of these maybe two people in the room have one of these and uh, as they get a bit of experience in it maybe we'll have them talk about this but this is a focuser rotator you do have a monitor on there that gives you live response um, I'm not sure if that monitor is, is one of the things that a lot of people ask. Can that monitor be turned off or taken off? But um, it is there, and I know it can be rotated down so the uh, screen doesn't interfere with anything. Uh, high, high, high resolution, both for the rotation and the focusing. And you can see in the back there the pricing. Uh, 2400 for the 2.5, 2650 for the 3.0, uh, 2900 for the uh 3.5 inch um these are uh well these will carry any gear you put on them and not only that but much like all of the moonlight equipment basically any color you want you can have and uh you all know their focusers i, I probably don't even have to put them on here but uh, all their focusers you can uh they have all different colors basically rock solid and high style. This is one of those things that impresses me every year, uh, the Astro Tent. Uh, we've seen a different version of it, but um, this one was only $249. And uh, the top uh, comes right off. Uh, so there's some poles that are removable inside, and you take the poles out, you remove the top, and you've got an open air observatory. Uh, if you've got rain or you've got some dew or you just want to hide your gear in the middle of the state park or the middle of your dark site, you just cover it right back up and you're set. Um, very cool, very cool tent. Uh, so this uh, astrophysics did have a new telescope there, but it was a... Um, 
uh, what was it, a Mac Newt? Uh, I believe it was a Mac, uh, let me think about that. It was uh, some sort of Maxitov telescope, but it was a 10 inch, if I'm correct. You know what? I might not be correct. I, I was more drooling over this guy, which isn't the new one, but uh, the Mac, the Mac was um, F17. So it's probably a great planetary scope. So as somebody mentioned, a great solar scope, but, uh, but um you know what? I go to astrophysics, and they didn't have anything new this year, so I go to astrophysics, and I just stare at this thing and drool because this is their Cassegrain that they introduced last year. Uh, at this point, if you want one, you probably can't have one, um, at least for a few years, but uh, just a, a really amazing piece of gear and not very heavy. Uh, you can see it's all open, too, so you could probably throw a shroud on there and uh, cut down on any reflections, but... Um, just a beautiful tube, ast tube ast astro or OTA, I should say, say astrophysics quality, and uh, so you know your imaging quality is going to be great, and the build quality is going to be great. Hard to beat. Another image. <laughs> Did I take that? Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm rotating it. Okay, I have the I have the uh, video on this, but. Um, not really showing this off so that you can hear uh, this uh, young astrophotographers or young astronomers presentation. But basically, this is the NEF uh, smaller stage. And uh, there are a lot of smaller presentations here. Uh, the um, They have a small screen, of course, so we all like our visual feedback. Uh, there's bleachers there, so you can check it out. I believe this stage is sponsored by OPT. Is this called the OPT stage, maybe? I think so. Uh, but uh, all day long presentations on basically anything you want. So if you haven't been to NEF and you're into uh, listening to presentations, uh, there's going to be one for whatever uh, type of astronomy you do, whether it's astrophotography, whether you're a planetary guy, whether you're a lunar guy, there's going to be something. Hi, and uh, I wanted Adam, to Adam. Adam, that particular kid was one of three um, youth presenting. They were um, the Astronomical League uh, Youth Astronomers Awards. And youth he was one of the three winners of that. But I did have it there just so we could see the OPT stage. Yep. Thank you, Alex. And, uh, well, this is the big stage. This is uh, where all of the uh, – what do I want to say? The uh, – I don't want to say better presenters. Uh, the more uh, famous presenters, the, the more uh, recognized presenters are going to be on this stage. Uh, nice theater, and uh, you could see uh, what looks like comfier seating and uh, theater style. Uh, large screen behind them to display their astrophotography or their presentations or whatever, whatever it may be. And... Um, just uh, another really cool aspect of going to meet. Uh, I'm going to be quiet for a bit. Okay, Adam and I have moved outside. We wanted to get some pictures of the uh, outdoor um, solar party, which they have every year at meet. And this year we're blessed with some very, very nice uh, sunshiny skies. And so we came out to take some pictures while the sun was out. We've had Oh, pretty much a week of clouds here um, in the area. So it's been pretty pretty darn miserable. And now at last, it looks like the sun's out just for the solar star party today. There's Adam walking around. Um, we're going to talk to Steve Ramston a little bit. And we'll leave it there. It used to be that this star party stretched out across that big construction out there, but it looks like they cut the field out a little bit for the construction. Everybody's busy, everybody's waiting in line, looking through the telescopes, getting ready for solar eclipse this uh, August. So I'll well, we cut it off here. And of course, that was Alex showing off the uh, solar star party. Alex, thank you uh, very much, uh, both Alex uh, and Tolga and... Uh, uh, well, basically everyone I met there uh, helped a lot. Alex was uh, filming a lot of different stuff that you'll see in a couple weeks. Uh, Tolga was basically uh, proudly showing off his new baby. Uh, he recently acquired an Officine Stellaris scope, 
which one of these days, uh, after he uses it uh, a few times, we're going to have to get a nice review of because uh, that is probably the prettiest scope out there. Uh, just he, he, he already used it last night in the freezing he, cold. <laughs> he already used it in his hotel parking lot. And uh, the, 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 the story spread. So other astrophotographers that were staying at other hotels in the area heard about this guy using the OS scope in the drive or in the parking lot and uh, gravitated over to his hotel. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it's funny. Uh, basically, the, the astronomy guys take over Suffern and uh, have a good time in the meantime. Um, you were in the lobby. Alex and I were um, just uh, talking at the main area of the hotel. I said, I asked Alex, hey, do you want to go outside to help me set up? We both went outside, went outside, set it up, started imaging. It just became a really event out there. And it, we, um, I remember at one point, well, we walked out there and, and we set it up. It took, what, 10 minutes to physically get it together. And then uh, he looked at me and says, hey, what time is it? What time is it? I said, it's 8. And he wouldn't believe me because it was exactly eight. And anyway, so it was eight o'clock. And at eight thirteen, after whatever he had to do, just to, just to show you how quick it was to set up. At eight thirteen, he had his first shot coming down, his first test shot coming down, perfectly guided and uh, pretty pretty good. And uh, then he said, "Okay, let's take him," and off he went. And uh, that's how quick it went. Yeah. He you guys, imaging fast. What is that? F two point two. Eight. Two point eight. Two point eight. Three. Three. Six hundred millimeter F three. F three. That's just cheating. People were coming out. Is that is that live? Is that is that what's really? Something? There was a prom going on or something at the, in the hotel, and uh, so Tolga, um, and it was just you know so pe the kids were coming out and asking us so asking me some questions while I was out there, and it wasn't my stuff. I was just watching it because Tolga was cold, I guess. Um, and uh, <laughs> so, uh, but the kids were interested in it and the, some of the, host, the hotel staff, stuff like that. It was kind of cool. Yeah, definitely a good time. The other, uh, one of the cool things we'll hear a little bit more about in a couple of weeks, Plane Wave has a nice new giant mount out, um, direct drive. Uh, so- uh, Here, let, 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 me share, let me share the uh, picture, Adam. From the hotel's parking lot. Yeah, go ahead. Um, share screen, right? Yep. There you go. There we go. Yeah, that's nice. That was a five. The laptop screen. That's a five-minute exposure. It's a rosette. I mean, you can see how uh, how much data there is. It's just a and a five minute exposure with a three nanometer filter. By the way, yeah. wait a minute. I'm seeing the picture, the, the, in the, the scope the itself in the background. Oh, okay. On the on the screen. He's not showing off everything yet. He wants to impress us with that final image, right? Um, and and at Neath, you had this shown on the uh, on the Avalon mount, right? Uh yeah. Yep. But switched over to the Paramount to uh, really get it going. Um, let's see. Uh, so basically, I think I, I, I the two Italians kind of went together. <laughs> well, I, what was that? I didn't hear that. You got out. Uh, I figured the two Italians went together pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Well, then you have to buy the Prima Luce uh, computer, too, right? You know, it's funny. I know you have that computer, but uh, just the color scheme on that Prima Luce would uh, really, I don't know. If you want a high-style-looking setup, that's, that's the way to go. That's actually, I actually talked about that in my uh, NEAC talk, and uh, that, that's a really pretty package. It's not, to, not just the look, just the, what it does. That's basically, it does the same thing what I did. In fact, I had the relay, you know, if you remember, if I had the relays, I could switch power off. But mine is messy. You know, yep. it's do it yourself. You got to have, you know, wire, you got to solder things. And this is all done for you. It's the connectors yeah, you are did. nice. 
he's got uh, screw holes in those computers that just match the dovetails, and he's got a he's he's got ADM set set of adapters and and dovetail clamps and stuff like that, all that pretty anodized reddish stuff. So, and and lots of extra screw holes, so you can configure mm -hmm. a number of different ways. It can go on the side. It can go on top. It can go underneath. Uh, you can put, you can mount it directly to the top of your telescope, and you can mount your guide scope rings to it. Yep, that kind of stuff. I don't know if I'd want to do that, but that, but you can do that. Yeah, I mean, it depends on your configuration, but uh, basically, there'd be a lot of, no matter which configuration you're using, there'd be a solution that would be. Mm -hmm the right way to, to use it. Um, I'm browsing through the comments. So I, I did see a ton of people there, uh, both uh, people uh, in the room tonight uh, or people who I see in the comments or uh, people who have presented in the past. And, and I, must, I must say, uh, it was interesting walking around with Adam because everybody was walking up to him and, and uh, asking him for autographs and stuff. Uh, this one young lady pulled her shirt down to the side so that never mind. Um, and the signature, the the autographs and everything. And uh, it was I, I wanna I wanna say how much how many people came up, and this is this is pimping our own show here, but um, how many people came up and said that they appreciate the fact that we can meet together like this every Sunday and how much they're learning. And they I I, I just wanna say how nice it was to have everybody uh, thanking Adam for doing this for us, and uh, and those two people who said, "Oh, is that Alex too?" Uh, I appreciate that too. So <laughs> lot, there you go, Adam. <laughs> yeah, mo most people don't recognize me without my kitchen behind me, but um, but it, yeah, it was uh, I agree, Alex. It's it's great. You know what? I like talking about astronomy. I like talking about astronomy gear. So. Uh, I liked it every time someone walked up to me and said, hey, how you doing? I like your show. And basically, I just wanted to know, oh, good. What are you shooting with? What are you doing? Uh, what, what, what do you like about our show? Because uh, maybe we'll do more of that. But um, yeah, there, uh, there was lots of uh, cool stuff. You know, um, as, I'm, as I'm browsing through the comments, I didn't get... Uh, Oh, okay. One more thing. Yeah. One more uh, item that I thought was pretty cool. You'll hear a little bit more about this next week. Not quite imaging centric. And that's where I, uh, uh, it was difficult because, uh, you know, we're a niche of a niche. We're a niche. The, the imagers are kind of the, uh, a little niche in astronomy. Um, well, there was a revolution imager, which uh, was a really cool gadget for $250 at NEEF, $300 normally. Uh, that you can get um, a mini CMOS video camera that hooks to a live output monitor. Uh, so basically you get live deep sky images that you can display for outreach um, or, uh, I mean, I, I don't know if, I, if this happens to everybody. But you'll set up your gear somewhere, maybe at a dark site, maybe uh, just at uh, like in a state park or something like that, and you start imaging. And then somebody walks up and they want to see through your telescope. Uh, so maybe you bought another mount so that you could show it off. Well, for outreach or for just doing that live stuff, this basically uh, gives you that opportunity. And I think um, if, I don't know, if you get that same experience where uh, you've got little kids around, and you're you're showing them a deep sky object through the eyepiece, and they're like, eh, eh. you have no idea if they're seeing it. At least with these monitors, uh, you you really do know what what they're able to see. You can, you can see it right there, and a whole crowd of people can see it. In addition, they have apps where if you're doing it for a school or for uh, or at a club, um, they can download an app and get access to that live output and if they want to tweet it or show it to their friends or take it with them they can do that um 
it's you know for two hundred and fifty dollars at Neef, three hundred dollars if you're not there. Um, it it was a really cool piece uh, piece of gear. Uh, it just really I don't know. Uh, we've we've got we've got several of them in our outreach crew. We do about sixty outreaches a year with our club, and um, you know we can see color in M forty two in a crowded shopping mall in Southern California. So that's just what kind of power it's got. It's a, a five by seven, I think, screen. Um, it just hooks to, um, it's like a, a, a artificial eyepiece kind of, and it's got a focal reducer with it. Uh, and if you want to get crazy, uh, you can use planetary, you can do planetary imaging with it. And uh, he's got little Ooh, that, did you see that digital recorder, that digital DVR, yeah. and um, with a little baby, mo you know, two inch by two inch monitor on it? I, I swear the thing was smaller than uh, a, well, a half a cigarette pack or something like that, and uh, it uh, recorded whatever was coming off that eyepiece right onto um, right right into the the, the uh, little chip or whatever they call it, SD chip. So it's kind of cool. Um, and you can also um, broadcast that Wi-Fi and people can click it on their phone and pick it right up and take that picture. So it's kind of cool. But uh, Adam, I, I, as long as we're not strictly speaking, just um, although that is some, you know, imaging, it's just a different kind of imaging for us. But as long as we're speaking about that, one of the things that I thought was really cool, again for outreach, or again from in the city, was Al Nagler has is developing an electronic eyepiece that, and I've seen them be, before based on night vision eyepieces, and you know you get that greenish um, glow with a lot of um, a lot of sparking around it and stuff like that. It looks kind of artificial. Well, Nagler's got this um, white phosphor that he uses. And as a result, the stars look like stars. Where are you going? Uh, the stars look like stars, and it's that's kind of cool that um, um, you can see all that stuff. It's it's really nice. Yeah, that eyepiece was really cool. Uh, I wish I got an opportunity to look at some actual yeah. stars, some deep sky. Yeah, I'd, I'd I'd like to see it at night. He had it simulated there, but I'd like to see it at night with um, you know with with all that would take. Um, you know, does it really do that, or is there a lot of false sparking around there and stuff like that? It's not ready till August. He doesn't. He's not. Or summer, he said. So it's not getting ready. There's a lot of things that we saw that really weren't ready to to show off yet. You know, that or that really weren't ready to sell, which I was surprised at this year. Okay, that's it for me. Yep. Yeah. That that was uh, probably one of the coolest. Uh, what do I call it? Being an imager, uh, non-imager gadgets uh, that uh, I saw uh, for, it, it's going to be pricey, but for even for as pricey as it was, it's one of those toys that I'd really like to have. Um, I spent some time looking up the technology that it's based on just because, what well, was that cool? I want to know how it works. Um, Tolga, was BISC there? I didn't see BISC, this software BISC. Uh, yes, they were there. They had a Taurus and a Mighty on display, and they had another Mighty at the Stellar Views booth. Uh, what, did, they, did they have anything new that they were showing off? Um, no, they had a Taurus. The Taurus that, that's, but I think that was, yeah, that was introduced last year. Yeah. Okay. Um, someone, yeah, someone in the comments is asking. Uh, I don't know. I I spent a lot of time walking around, and uh, it's like a kid in a candy shop. I must have missed some of the candy. Uh, oh, good! Someone bought their first mount. Nice, uh, and they took advantage of the show pricing, which really is I don't know. Uh, basically, whatever you want. Uh, even if you live across the country, if you're buying some expensive gear, it might be worth it just to fly in and take advantage of that 10%. Uh, all of the vendors, even if they don't have the item there, 
will give you that 10% and ship it to you. And, and one of the other things you should do is if you, if you know you're in the market for something, call Farah or Dustin, or well, call, I guess, really using their real names, call Telescope Warehouse or um, OPT or High Point Scientific were the three big vendors there, right? Were there any others that I'm missing? I don't want to unfairly, gee, I just said, being in Southern California, I know OPT and, and Woodland Hills. Um, call them and tell them that you're interested in buying something and have them bringing it out there for you. And they often, um, their sale price is skipping the sales tax or uh, sometimes they give 10% off. Um, I should remind you, of course, though, that um, there is such a thing as a use tax. And when you pay your taxes at the end, you are supposed to declare that you've just spent 8000 bucks on a mount, uh, you know, out of state, stuff like that. So you don't, you don't really get out of paying the sales tax. So um, I don't and, think every I don't think every state has a use tax, though. I'm in California. So you're in California. You know, I yeah. think Pennsylvania does. New York does. But uh, some uh, and, of the states don't. And some of the other things, I I never stay around for Sunday because, like in this case, I had to, to drive back home to um, Columbus, uh, to where my family is. And uh, but I understand that towards the end of the day on Sunday, people start selling stuff, and they don't want to they don't want to ship it home. Uh, Tolga, you were you're around at that time. Maybe you can add something to that. I don't want to speak to something I've never actually seen, um, you know, but. That's one of the other things. Just as if we're giving you advice and you've never been to Neef, we should probably mention that particular aspect of it. But call somebody if you want. If you're interested in something, they may not be bringing it until you, they get a call from you saying, "Hey, bring it. Let's let's make the deal there." In fact, I've done I've done exactly that. I I I, I bought something, uh, just exactly what you're saying. I said, "Bring it to Neef," and I didn't have to pay shipping on it. And uh, also. So you're right about the, the last minute discounts. A lot of the vendors, you know, they don't want to pack it and bring it home. It, sh it costs them more to ship it back than, you know, they they'll give you that discount on Sunday. Um, there was a guy, um, the Revolution Imager uh, guy, he was doing, he was selling the Revolution, Celestron Revolution. Am I, am I right? The, the old yeah. It's a, the, the the well, it's... And he, he was given the imager for free. He's like, buy the buy the mount, and he take the imager for free. Cool. So anyway. Bill, Bill saying High Point couldn't do tax free because he lives in New Jersey. Um, uh, yeah. So if you let me think about that, is High Point out of New Jersey or New York? I forget. I think it's they're in New Jersey. And they're in New Jersey. Jersey. Okay, yeah, that's odd. They, maybe they're registered to pay sales tax in New York. I, I know there's, there's I, battles I, between the tri-state area over sales tax. And and I got to tell you, I, I saw miss. I, I saw several different interpretations of what the sales tax thing is. That while I was there, uh, some people wouldn't sell because of the sales tax thing, and other people I didn't understand it quite. But, uh, you know, it, it's a it's an eight in my case, because where I live, it's an eight percent sales tax. It's an it can be an eight percent discount in some cases. And it really, maybe all they're doing is just they're paying the tax. They're just discounting the price eight percent or whatever that mathematically works out to. Um, yep. So that's basically my recap. I. We did a bunch of interviews with a bunch of different vendors, which we'll put on in a couple weeks. Um, but I'm also going to say this. Uh, I don't know his last name. Danny, who is Pinbout, P-I-N-B-O-U-T, on Cloudy Nights, uh, every year uh, goes to Neef and records some pretty thorough uh, videos of almost every... Uh, table out there and you can check him out on YouTube and uh, I mean he does a really good job and as much as I want you guys to watch me talk in a couple weeks uh, if you really can't wait uh, you can check out his videos uh, he isn't an imager though he's more of a visual guy so you'll uh, but he but he does still go to the, some of the imaging booths but um, if you're desperate to see the latest and greatest and 
soak up everything from Neef. Uh, check out his videos as well. The one um, lastly, lastly, uh, OPT actually Dustin and Ginny is gonna they're gonna be on Times Square tomorrow night uh, with Takahashi, and if it's clear, they're gonna they're supposed to be imaging right from uh, uh, Times Square. No, oh, nobody will notice. <laughs> it's Times Square. That's another thing, guys. I mean, like if you're for, with, for me, I'm I I live in California. I've got family in in Ohio, so I get credit for visiting Grandma, you know, for a week. When in fact, I'm here for two days and in New York for five days. But you get to go to New York and you get to go, you know, Broadway play maybe and go see your cousins or whatever it is. Uh, it's really a lot of fun. And really, we've really shorted NIAC. Uh, the Northeast Astro Imaging Conference is really a lot of good stuff going on at NIAC. Um, uh, Adam wasn't there. He was focusing on a lot of the stuff he saw. We will have more to show you later. We've got lots. Of, we've probably got an hour's worth of video of various products, and we haven't even talked about how we're going to pre present it. Um, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about NIAC and what you, why you should all be going there and a few other things. And I want to I want to congratulate uh, Tolga, who is one of the volunteers there, one of the worker bees, and uh, he helps organize the thing. And it's always good to recognize the people that help run these things. So thank you, Tolga. Oh, thank you, thank, thank you. Yeah, this really is a great show, and the club that runs it, and uh, all the guys that run it. Credit to you guys because uh, it's. Uh, um, well, I look forward to it every single year. Um, I do want to mention next week's session, Josh Smith, and I was even asked about this at NEEF. Um, Josh Smith is going to present on uh, near-infrared imaging. Uh, basically, um, near-infrared imaging with amateur equipment. Uh, so it's uh, if you're looking for another filter channel or another way to uh, get uh, different look out of your images that might be a good opportunity um adam adam don't check yep. out yet yeah rathajit is asking us a real good question here yes can you link us to the youtube channel that has I, the neat videos i probably can but uh wes just posted it uh on youtube just search for p-i-n-b-o-u-t um i don't see i don't see uh, okay okay let me see i'll, I'll try and pull it up quickly Pin, Pinbout is the name of the guy. Oh, I thought you were talking about, but there's a rather extensive thread with a lot of pictures in the, um, in, in the forums on Cloudy Nights. He, he probably posted links to all of these videos on Cloudy Nights. Um, that's my guess. Uh, I see, uh, yeah, he's, he's uh, got all, uh, well, he's got a few okay. brands. Like Steve, Steve Waldron's posted an actual uh, uh, link there. Perfect. Mr. Pinbout, there we go, MR Pinbout, uh, YouTube slash user slash Mr. Pinbout, but yeah, uh, Pinbout, search YouTube for that and you'll find it. Uh, I'm guessing, yeah, there you go. The link's already up. Okay, cool. All right, well, uh, that's all I got for you this week. Uh, of course, we'll have more in the weeks coming up. But I do want to thank you all for coming. Thank you, Alex, for helping me out with some of this stuff. Thank you, Tolga, for showing me around and uh, pointing out some of the cool stuff. We, uh, like I said, thanks thanks to everyone who just kind of walked up to me and said hi. Uh, definitely made me have a more fun show. Um, but that's it. We'll see you guys next week. Adios, todos.